Well, good morning. It's good to have you with us and grateful that uh, we have this day to be able to be together. And uh, we're uh, enjoying some warmer weather, so we feel like moving around a little differently than what we typically have in, in, uh, in the last few months, and so we're grateful for that. And um, I'm Pastor Mike, and the lead pastor here, in case uh, you're visiting today, and looking forward to just uh, sharing a little bit later in the service uh, from God's Word uh, with you. But uh, we have been waiting and waiting for a few weeks now for our uh, Cornerstone Women Bible Study to get started as well as our Blast uh, Children's uh, Night uh, get started. So we believe at this point that that's going to happen tomorrow evening. Uh, the uh, Cornerstone Women Bible Study, there are two different times where that's going to be offered. One is at 4 p.m., the other one is at 6 p.m. Uh, during the 6 p.m. time is also when the Blast uh, Children's Ministry is going to be happening as well. And so if you have children that uh, uh, you need some attention given for while you can be a part of the Bible study, then moms, by all means, uh, make sure you uh, bring your children for that and we can uh, care for them with the Blast Children's Night. And I know that Jen's really excited. She's got a great theme picked out and looking forward to, to that. And so uh, that's our anticipation uh, as of right now. But uh, keep your eyes and ears open as to whether uh, that's going to hold. And uh, we're excited about that. I just had an incredible time this last uh, Friday and yesterday uh, in that I got to retreat with our Impact Council. Uh, that is our board, um, and uh, we have two new faces that we added to that board, and so we wanted to uh, draw around the table and make sure that uh, we're ready to journey together in this next year, and so I'm so grateful for our, the extra time that they gave uh, to volunteer to make that connection, and we... Uh, are, are, are off to a great start for this year, 2022. And um, <clears throat> we uh, last weekend had a life night, and we're going to be talking about our next life night, and uh, uh, that'll be coming up here shortly, and we're looking forward to how that's going to roll out for us. And it'll be a different topic. The last one we focused on couples and marriage, and the next one is going to be a little bit more broader. Uh, so we can invite uh, many more of you to participate in the Life Night. Those are just opportunities for us to have some different types of conversation, um, just about how we interact with our community and the things going on around us, and, and then how Jesus is a part of that conversation. And uh, so be looking for the, the next Life Night to come. Um, <clears throat> that's really all the announcements I have for this morning. I'm going to invite Chester uh, up for uh, our time of worship. Uh, we uh, have the opportunity to have our worship team away, uh, getting some refreshment and spending time with family this weekend with it being the President's Day weekend, and so we're excited that Chester is able to step in and fill in this morning, and uh, I want to pray, and then I'm going to turn the time over to Chester uh, to lead us in our time of worship. Pray with me. Father God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the week that we journeyed through. Lord, there have been so many highs, and, and there's been some lows. Lord, uh, we just again think about our community that's grieving the loss of a couple, and uh, Lord, we just uh, lay, the, lay our community before you, and Lord, help us to, to, to grieve properly and to move through uh, that challenge as, as it's been presented to us. Thank you so much for this time today that we have to be able to gather together, uh, to uh, be encouraged, to be reminded that the faith that we have is, is uh, real. Uh, you're not a dead God, you are alive. And you're active in our lives, and so we're grateful for that. Lord, may this expression of worship that we're about ready to extend be truly coming from a heart uh, that is out of the overflow of, of, of things that we've experienced with you in the course of this week, whether it's been in Scripture, whether it's been in times of prayer, whether it's been your Holy Spirit that's been nudging us. Father, you are good. You're the good, good Father. And so tend to our hearts now as we're here together whether uh, this is a regular place where, we, where we're at or it just is, this is a Sunday morning where this is the first time that, uh, that we're engaging in this, this, this time of worship. Father, uh, come, have your way now. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Good morning. Hey, um, this is a brief interruption of the service, not an interruption, but... I'm told there's a birthday girl in the crowd, and uh, not to mention any names, but Dana, or to put her on the spot, I won't ask her how old she is, but let's sing happy birthday to her, okay? Happy 
We won't even ask her to stand up. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dana. Happy birthday to you. All right. Just, uh, you know, you guys, it's been a long, long, long time since I've been part of the worship team up here. But I, for, for those of you who know me, I, those of you who don't know me, those who know me know this, that um, I cry easy. <laughs> And, and, you know, and, and you know the Lord. You know when he, when I do music or or when I share, I, I had the devotional for men's uh, Bible study this in prayer breakfast on uh, Wednesday morning, and uh, and the Lord touched my heart while I was sharing. And I tell you what, I cried like a little girl. And uh, but you know when I do music, sometimes the Lord touches my heart like he does yours, and when he reaches down with that hand, he'll flick these tear ducts here. I don't know what that's about, but if that happens, um, you just keep singing, and I'll catch up. <laughs> here we go. All right. <clears throat> Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood, would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the and pride. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come forth, come into Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily in places to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. All right, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. The splendor of the King, globe and majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning. And the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God! 
God, sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great. sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. I see the Lord seated on the throne. Exalted and the train of his robe fills the temple with glory, and the whole earth is filled, and the whole earth is filled, and the whole earth is filled.
grace, how sweet. Father, we come to you today and we're grateful for the opportunity to be able to sing and celebrate our sins can be washed away. Our sins can only be washed away because you went to the cross for us and laid down your life and uh, your shed blood provided forgiveness for us. And for those of us who found salvation in you, we realize what it means to have our sins washed away. Lord, uh, those sins were things that uh, we got caught up in the world doing and participating in, and they distracted us from you. And we know that you want pure, righteous, holy individuals. And Father God, that's not possible without you removing sin from us. And Father, we're still going to be in that place where we're going to be tempted to sin. Uh, we saw it in Scripture where you were tempted and uh, you were able to, 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 to remain perfect and holy and pure in the midst of that because you leaned into your Father and your Father's will. And Father, as we're here this morning, we're leaning into you, grateful for what your Son Jesus has done for us, uh, that when we are tempted, we can come up against that temptation and we can flee and run the other direction towards you. Or if we decide to go on with that temptation, and then it becomes sin where we dwell upon it, we participate in it, it becomes kind of our life. And it causes chaos, and it causes division between us and you. And Father, if there are people this morning that are sitting here, and, and they have sin in their life, we know, Lord God, that, that you want to rid them of that. You want to make them white as snow. You want to provide that opportunity for them to say yes to you and find salvation in you today. 
And so, Lord, I pray that they'd be listening and they'd be open, Lord, to hearing what you want to speak to them about today. Thank you for each believer who's here today, Lord, and for the, the incredible witness that it brings to my life and so many others. Thank you for Chester and his willingness to step forward this morning and use the gifts you poured into him to, to lead us in this time of worship. And Father, uh, now as, as we look to your word and, and it's going to speak to, to some things about our character and who we are and challenge us with some things, I pray, Lord, that we're, we're ready to be good learners, good listeners, people that are willing, Lord, to step in and, and lean into you this morning in a way that would, would prove that in this next week that we, we really did meet with you here, that there'll be application that will come from our time spent together today. Thank you for each one who is behind the scenes in the nursery and downstairs teaching our children this morning and for those who are running our, our, our uh, uh, slides and sound. And Lord, we couldn't do this without their participation. So we're so grateful for their willingness to do that. Father, lead and guide now. Move me out of the way. Move the distractions of our home out of the way if that's where we're watching from. And Lord, may this just be a time that we can focus on you and uh, continue our conversation about Reset. We pray these things in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Again, Chester, thank you so much for being willing to, to step in and lead us this morning in that way. Um, in, in humility, right? Recognizing that uh, uh, with the, the gifts he has, that he just wants to be a blessing. Uh, whether it's here on a Sunday morning or it's whether it's during the week, uh, he just wants to be used by God. And don't we all? That's our purpose, right? We want God to use us. We want to, to, to find purpose in him. And here at Cornerstone, our vision is that we're impacted for eternity to help bring redemption in the valley and beyond. And in the middle of that um, conversation is the importance of redemption and how we get to have a part of that, where we get to share our testimony, where we get to look at scripture, where we get to, to live life out uh, in front of our family, in front of our community, in front of our neighbors and whatnot. And with that, we have the opportunity then to establish our identity in Christ. Well, we've been in a series, for those of you who are joining us this morning, uh, called Reset, getting uh, the opportunity for us to, to finding a renewed normal in the midst of all the swirling and the changes and stuff we've experienced in the last uh, two years now almost, right? Um, I was just on a pastor's call as uh, we have prayer for, uh, every Thursday, and uh, we were remarking about how two years ago, <clears throat> we couldn't believe that we uh, shut down church uh, at Easter. And <clears throat> we shut down church at Easter because there was a, a pandemic or an issue or a virus that was spreading that we knew little about. <clears throat> and uh, so we actually all met, met virtually <clears throat> when it came to that, uh, that Easter and with that, uh, we recognized that there was going to be some, some new normals that were going to develop out of that, right? That COVID-19 was going to upset the apple cart and change a bunch of just different variables, variables for us. And with that, then we have some renewed normals, some, some things that, 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 that we're going to miss because the, the normal's not coming back. But, but also the, the freshness of knowing that there's some now new opportunities that God is inviting us into that uh, we weren't aware of or we didn't care to, to respond to at the time. But uh, we're grateful for the way the Lord carried us through those times. So that's the series that we're in for those who are joining us this morning. And um, <clears throat> you just happened to, to land on uh, the conversation about how to, to, to care for your enemies or how to love your enemies, Right? Um, so a question this morning, get us started is, how do you fight with your enemies? How do you fight with your enemies? <clears throat> We're going to have them. They're going to be people who oppose us that, that don't understand our faith, don't understand that there's a different way that, <clears throat> that we want to live versus how they want to live. And with that, we're going to find some different people in our life that we're going to kind of butt heads with. And uh, one of the things I find frustrating sometimes about Scripture is there are things that the Lord puts in here that I actually have to wrestle with myself. Because about the time I think I have everything figured out, I understand exactly how to navigate in love and love my neighbor. Uh, Matthew Winter shared that with us last week, right? Um, how, to, how to care for our neighbor. Well, first of all, we have to care for our neighbor in ways that we're going to, we care for ourselves. And with that then, before that though, we have to love God first, right? And sometimes we get those sequences out of, out of order. We get that 
place where we want to try to love someone out of, this, out of our own strength and our own, our own wherewithal, I guess you would call it. And there are shortcomings to that. Uh, there are shortcomings to that because it's not coming out of that love that, that we have for God. It's just coming out of the good will of our heart. And there is a difference. There's a difference when we do these things uh, on behalf of the Lord because he helps us to, to fight in the midst of these times. Where, where he provides in times where the enemy is there and is challenging us and we have a, a struggle before us. When we came across uh, this uh, slide this week. And it says, sometimes the best thing to do is to say nothing at all and let God fight the battles for you. Wait a minute. We're Americans. We fight. We battle. We've had wars. We have contention. We have things that, that, that we really need to stand up for. And no doubt, we have done those things, right? But when it comes to the Christian faith and it comes to understanding how to navigate <clears throat> within community, we have to be willing to let God fight for us. That's hard. <clears throat> that means we have to lay down our will and allow his will to become ours. And uh, laying down our will is super hard because uh, since we were uh, little tykes, uh, we were told you got you to gotta fend for yourself and y you got to make sure no one's picking on you. And, and, uh, but for those of us who've been bullies, I've been a bully in the past, and maybe you've experienced some bully, bullying in the past. Um, <clears throat> we think we're getting the one up on someone, right? And so we quickly develop enemies and the things happen. But as a believer, there are some things that we once, at one time, we were that enemy, right? We were enemies towards God. We, we didn't want to uh, have God's will be a part of life. We didn't want to have a relationship with God. But instead of God just letting us wallow around and trying to figure stuff out, he sought you out. He's still seeking you out if you've not yet found him. But for those of us who have been found, he leaves the 99. There's a parable in scripture uh, where he leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. Now, the, 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 flock, the, the, the flock that's gathered, the 99 that's gathered, he, he's not as concerned about those because they're already there. They're already protected. They're already part of the fold. But the one that he goes after at one time was you and me. At one time, we were those enemy, that enemy because we were choosing something else other than choosing God in the first part of our life. And with that, you and I sometimes still wrestle with that uh, old enemy. We hear voices on our head. We're not good enough. Uh, you haven't done enough. Uh, you're not smart enough. Man, you really messed up there. There's no way you can be a disciple of Christ. There's no way you can be a believer. And that, that, that voice comes into our head, right? And we start thinking, well, maybe we, we are still that enemy. But if we found salvation in Christ and we are believers in Christ, uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to do life perfectly, also means that the other people around us aren't going to do life perfectly. And so we're going to have enemies. We're going to have challenges, right? But the one true enemy that we have, of course, is Satan, right? And, uh, and with that, we know there's going to be times where we're going to be challenged spiritually with some things. Uh, First Thessalonians here, though, reminds us, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Those are Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians. And uh, uh, we have a, a true enemy in the Satan and the devil. In fact, we, we find here also in 1 Peter where it says, Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, seeking someone to take out, seeking someone who has maybe decided, you know what, um, I, I, I'm going to ditch this relationship with the Lord for a moment because I want to dabble in this, this sin over here. And when that happens, then the enemy, Satan here, provides that opportunity to come in and, and, and distur disturb, upset, cause chaos in the midst of our relationship, and he is that true enemy. So many times we look horizontally here uh, at, our, at our brothers and sisters and acquaintances and friends and uh, uh, those on our sports team and, and whatnot, and as we see those people, sometimes we feel like they're the enemy. We feel like they are doing whatever they can to push our buttons and whatnot, and maybe they are, but by and large, our true enemy is Satan the devil. 
Um, uh, we also have spiritual forces that we're wrestling with, right? And we're reminded of that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Those are the, the true enemy of our soul. That is the attack, right? If there's a, a, a weakness, the, 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 the enemy is going to try to attack there. And so this morning, <clears throat> what are some ways that can keep us from loving our enemy? Why is it that, <clears throat> that we would have such a hard time about loving our enemy? Well, first of all, I think it's because we've, we're, we're being hurt. We're being hurt by someone. Someone is lashing out, either it's through words or maybe it's been a physical altercation times past or whatever, and so it makes it difficult for us to love someone in that way. We were <clears throat> going back to Chester sharing on Wednesday morning at, at prayer breakfast. He was talking about toxic anger and how toxic anger is something that we uh, develop uh, over the course of our life, if we've experienced that from the hand of maybe our father or a mother uh, that, that lived that way and treated us in those ways, where, where anger was the first thing to, to happen in the order of business in the day, right? And so there'd be a, 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 a flip of a switch, and there would be anger vented for whatever reason. Maybe, uh, for me example, there was times where I was acting out as a kid, and as I was acting out as a kid, there were times where I knew that my mother or my stepfather or my father were, were angry. And so <clears throat> I was hurt in those times. Physically, there were spankings. Verbally, there were things that, that took place. And many of you recognize maybe some of that in your rearing as, as well, right? Where you were hurt. So when you're hurt, you don't want to move towards someone. You want to repel and move away. <laughs> but when you're hurt, you, you do everything you can to steer around and maybe do things different or try to make up for it so you can gain the approval of that parent again. Or, or, or maybe you're loving or I mean we're jealous. We're jealous about what they're able to do and how they're doing it, right? Like it doesn't seem fair that we as a believer are, are, are needing to navigate this way, but they get all this lenience over here. And so you're a little bit jealous about how the enemy can, can get away with all this stuff. Or maybe you're desiring to hurt someone. And so out of that toxic anger, out of the experiences, maybe you are the one who is desiring to hurt that enemy. You want to take them out. You want to annihilate them. Okay, that's fine. That can be part of that conversation, right? And then it's also about what others might be saying about that enemy. When someone else has a different perspective, a different thought, and they're just kind of throwing a little bit more uh, wood to the fire or, or stoking the, the, the animosity against that other enemy or whatnot, then you can take that and you can go, oh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, and you can kind of feed into that, and pretty soon you have a wildfire going on, right? In your life, in the lives of the people around you, because you are just in that place where you are constantly on the attack or you're feeling like you're attacked. And can I tell you that within all these types of situations, there's really only one person that can change how toxic your anger is currently or how angry you are at someone that you want to actually hurt them. And that, of course, is our Lord Jesus. The mercies that he's extended to us, the things that he has done for us as a believer, um, <clears throat> It requires us then to act in a certain way and behave in a certain way to model what he's taught us, to model that there is a different way. Well, in Luke chapter 6, verse 17 uh, through uh, 38, we're going to take in some scripture this morning. And so if you turn with me to Luke chapter 6, uh, we'll start at verse 17. Luke chapter 6. Verse 17, I'll give you just a, a minute to get there. The 
pages have stopped flipping, so that's cool. It's cool that we got there. Starting at verse 17, it says this. Therefore, do not be foolish, but instead understand what the Lord's will is. Wait a minute, am I in the right spot? No, I'm not. 17. Uh, he went down uh, with them and stood at, the, at a level place. A large crowd of disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from uh, Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Uh, those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power is coming from him and, the, and healing them all. Looking at the disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for, your, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in the day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how this, uh, their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when someone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect uh, uh, repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you'll be children of the Most High, because he is the kind that the ungrateful uh, and wicked be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. In the last two verses, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For what the for for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So the beatitudes come in here, and some conversation about how to navigate life differently is now hitting the ears of the believers as Jesus is sharing with them. These are Jesus' words, and uh, and I don't care if you wrestle with my words or not. Uh, and, and throw them out, but you can't just wrestle with God's word and throw it out as not particular to you. Um, because now the word's shared with you, uh, you do have some responsibility now as a believer, in case you've never read this passage of scripture, uh, that, that in fact, there are some different ways we're supposed to navigate in this life we're calling Christian. Uh, it's the unfortunate part is that a lot of times the, the hypocrisy or the, the things that other people see about us um, come from some of these types of scenarios, right? And, uh, and for sure, um, there's at times maybe reason to, to point fingers and say, hey, you know what? There is, is really something different here that you're supposed to be living. And we don't like that when our enemy calls us to that attention. Hey, Christian, you're supposed to be living different. 
And maybe you are supposed to be living different, but for whatever reason you have fallen into this place where you think it's okay to persecute others and talk about others and slander others and those kind of things when this non-believer is recognizing, oh, you're no different than me. Your, your heart hasn't changed. The way you speak about people isn't changed. The way you do things isn't changed. So really what's the big deal about being a Christian? What's a really big deal about being a believer? Well, for those of us who've understood uh, the, the conversations happening here in Luke chapter 6, we recognize that there's a way that we're supposed to be developing a heart for our enemy. What? Well, he just said here. Here's some ways that we develop that. So first of all, it involves a supernatural love. Without the love of Christ, without the, the mercy that we've experienced, without the forgiveness that we've experienced in Christ, there's no way that we'd ever want to have any experience with our enemy. True? But because we have had that supernatural experience, that, that, that anointing, that, that Holy Spirit stirring with us, the, the salvation that has come, we recognize, as we talked earlier, that we once were an enemy, and we are no longer that enemy because the Lord loves us in a supernatural way. Well, that supernatural way of loving then should radiate, should overflow from who we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14 says, Let all that you do be done in love. All that you do be done in love. So whether that's having a conversation with uh, someone that you really care about, obviously we want to do that in love. But if we know that there's someone who is in opposition to us, how do we have that conversation in love towards them? How do we move towards them in a way that they can see that there is something different about our countenance? We're not going after to attack them or, 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 or beat them up or, or, or try to win them maybe even to our side. But we're moving towards them because we realize that there's a greater thing at stake here. And that is this supernatural love that we're talking about. Supernatural love that we've experienced that, that propels us to care for uh, our enemies in a different way. Developing that heart for enemies also derails the plans of Satan. It derails the plans of Satan. Here's a reference here in John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, there's an encounter. Uh, the Pharisees had every right to cast judgment, uh, to cast stones, <clears throat> to belittle, to cut down a woman who's caught in adultery. They have every right. The law says so. Here's what you're supposed to do when you find these people caught in adultery. Well, Jesus enters into that conversation, and instead of him picking up a stone and starting to throw that stone at the, the, the woman who's caught in this way, what does he do? He stoops down on the ground, and he writes something in the ground, a mystery to all of us as to what that might be and what the reference might be. But then he stands up and says, now, if you can cast the stone because you have no sin in your life, then do so. In the midst of that, they all start dropping their stones and retreating and realizing that what they were about to do was bring judgment on someone. That, they, that th Though they had the right to do all that, Jesus was now saying, nah. Now, did he allow her to stay and remain in that sin? No. He said, now go sin and no more. Walk away from that lifestyle. Walk away from being that adulterous person. You see, that is part of the, the, the derailment of Satan's plans is that when we actually understand how the Lord is relating to us and he wants us to, to, to love beyond the measures we have, we look in the scripture and we, we see encounters or, or confrontations like this. And, and Jesus, again, instead of throwing that stone, he finds a different way to care for and love that person who's in front of him, just like he's cared for and loved you. When you've been picking up that stone, you're ready to chuck that baby. But you've decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Because I serve a God that's greater, and he's going to help uh, that supernatural love to invade my life, so then I can derail the plans of Satan. Uh, developing a heart of, for my enemies, uh, in Proverbs, also 25 uh, verses 21 and 22 says this. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. 
and the Lord will reward you. So instead of wanting to one-up or get on top of or beat down, you're at a place where you realize that, hey, they're seeing that they're thirsty. What are they thirsty for? Is it truly the, 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 the water, the, the physical water that they need to be drinking? Mm, probably not. Their, their, their thirst comes from a spiritual thirst because they haven't found that quencher, the thirst quencher in Jesus, right? Um, food to drink, water to drink, right? Those are, those are the necessities that keep us alive. Within the course of our enemies, they, they are going to do everything they can to, to kill us, to take us out, to draw chaos, right? And here we are, we're going to respond differently. And Solomon writes here in this, this proverb that we're supposed to, to, to care for them in ways that eventually the Lord is going to see there's a reward for you. Now, do we do all these things to, to stack all these rewards in heaven? With the, no. We're not working our way to gain salvation. Salvation is free. It's given to us. Jesus has done everything that we, we need to be able to receive that. But within that, we have to recognize that there are ways that we're going to navigate it differently. Uh, and then it's also dedicated to the well-being of others. When you have that ex- cloak exchange, and when, you, when you have the, uh, that exchange with that enemy, you recognize, you're recognizing them in that image of God. How many times when we look at other people, we m- don't see that they're created in God's image? God has created each one of us. Many of us in here have come to understand that There's a God that loves us and gave his life for us through his son, Jesus. But then there's others who haven't had that experience, and and, and, and they they are going to try to take advantage. They're going to try to steal. They're going to try to take. And so instead of all the, 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 the wrestling to and from, what if we just give it? What if we just say, you know what? I don't need this. This is yours. What is their response going to be? Maybe they're going to try to take more. Maybe they're going to walk away and really kind of consider, wow, this was a different experience. This was a different way that uh, this person uh, cared for me. Uh, Developing a heart for your enemies also is uh, praises the Lord, even in the midst of the battle. There's going to be trials. There's going to be circumstance. Um, You can look in in James uh, where the trials and the circumstances provide perseverance for us, right? We live in a pretty cushy place here in the United States when it comes to being a Christian. There's not a whole lot of, of uh, real, real governmental pressures and persecution. We're meeting here freely on a Sunday morning with our doors unlocked. There are other brothers and sisters around the world where they're still meeting, and the, the gospel is expanding faster than it is here in the United States. Some of it has to do with the fact that we're pretty comfortable in our faith. We've come to understand this is kind of the way we navigate, and as long as I stay in my lane for this period of time and do these things, then I'm pretty cool. But whenever someone comes into that lane and tries to to interfere, such as an enemy or someone outside, how do we adjust to that? Do we retaliate, or do you give praise and say, Lord, thank you for this battle? Lord, thank you for this contention. Thank you for this opposition that I'm facing because it's going to provide something for me right now and maybe into the future. You know, we live in the United States where we have a lot of freedoms to worship and that expression of of worship. And we're thankful for that. But what if that were to change overnight? What, what What if we became a socialist country? What if we became a communist country? Would that change your attitude about Christ and how you live your life? I certainly hope not. I I would think that your life would still continue to navigate with your eyes pointed and fixed on Christ. But for some of us, we're not going to be able to get beyond that because we're going to be so caught up in the battle. Instead of the praise and the worship and recognizing he's, he's counted us worthy to be able to journey into that, it's his will that's he is winning now. He is winning now. The question is, do you believe that? And then last this morning, a developing heart for your enemies leaves no room for hatred, only God's mercy. When you and I understand how Christ has laid down his life for us and uh, he has the ultimate say, 
allow him to be that judge. Allow him to uh, 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 be the one that helps you to see how to extend his mercy to other people around you. But again, this doesn't come out of a, a, a contrary heart. It doesn't come out of a, a place where we're just kind of working hard at trying to do it. It comes out of a place where daily we're spending time with the Lord. We're in his word. We're reading passages like this that really kind of get our attention and go, okay, how am I supposed to do this differently? What's the application here for me? In fact, uh, this morning, kind of the closing question would be this. How will you look to develop a heart for your enemies in this week to come? Maybe you're aware of those enemies currently and you've just uh, tried to ignore or put off. And that's okay. I suppose you could probably do those things. But are those enemies going to go away then? Probably not. They're probably going to be right back, staring you in the face, challenging you. And when that happens, are you going to be able to love them in a different way? Are you going to be able to con contend for them in a different way? How do we contend for them in a different way? Prayer, right? One of the uh, uh, greatest spiritual warfare items we have in our toolbox is prayer. There's nothing that uh, anybody can do or say to change you from being able to pray. If you are in the mindset that this is an important thing for you to pray about, you pray about it, right? You lift it to the Lord. So when it comes to our enemies, how might you need to be lifting them in prayer and say, Lord, they're really kind of a, a thorn in my side right now. They're really kind of getting at me. But I realize that you've knit them together. I realize that you love them. Lord, you're going to have to show me how to do that. You're, melt their heart. Soften who they are so that they too can experience your love. So they too can, can walk away from the toxic anger and, and not be that enemy in my life any longer. And then uh, Corey Ten Boom says this. You never so uh, touch the ocean of God's love as when you forgive your enemies. Corey Ten Boom knew some things about enemies. Um, she found herself in some places where she was held captive. And within that, it sounds to me in her expression here that she found a way to love and forgive her enemies. This morning, maybe that's your first step. You've got to find a way to forgive those enemies who've come in, who continue to rattle your cage for whatever reason, and say, Lord, I need your supernatural love to show me how to love them. Thank you so much for what you've done in my life. Thank you for the way that you transform my heart, transform my mind in regards to these things. And Lord, I know that you want that transformation for them. I know that you want them to, to live for you because you created them. You knit them together. You have purpose for them. And this morning, if uh, we've come across some conversation about this and and you're, you're at a place where you're like, yep, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to, 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 to move toward that enemy and to pray. Then that's exactly the way that the Lord wants you to leave today. But if you're still at that place, you're like, I'm bitter and I can hold on to this. And you can. But why would you want to? <laughs> why would you want to continue to navigate in that way? Why would you continue to, to, to give yourself in that way? It just ties you up spiritually. It doesn't allow you to, to, to spiritually move about and do the things you're supposed to because you're constantly fixed on having your bitterness being expressed towards whomever. And, and maybe it's just a little bit of a, again, a, a, a conversation in the back room or the side room or whatever. Oh, I, I can't stand this person. Well, again, if we put ourselves in the perspective of being that enemy at one time with God, then we can say, you know what? Jesus is going to go after that one. I've got to go after that one. Start praying for them. Being that prayer warrior that they need in their life that they don't even know they need. And go after them with the gift of prayer. Pray with me. Father, uh, we've covered through quite a bit of challenging conversation here. And Lord, we are so grateful that you're patient with us and you tend our hearts, and you help us, Lord God, to, to live out of a, a new, a renewed normal when it comes to, to things like this. Father, as I'm sharing here this, this day, Lord, I just continue to pray for my enemies. I, I pray for those, Lord, that I know are, are anti-me because I am about you. 
And Father, there's always going to be those persons out there. There's always going to be those who try to rattle a cage and get under our skin and cause that bitterness to well up. And Father, I pray that you'd help us to see more and more of how your Holy Spirit melts those things away, takes care of those things for us. Because we know then that we'll be walking in freedom. We'll be walking in that forgiveness you extended. And with that then, we can love in these ways that that we're talking about this morning. Father, thank you so much, Lord, again, uh, over between last week and this week, the importance of making sure that you're first and foremost in our life. Lord, that you're not second, that you're not just something that we kind of gravitate to in the, in the difficult things, but, but we also worship and praise you in the moments of our lives where we see you actively working. Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and, 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 and see and, and see how you're, you're navigating things in our life, how, how you're helping us to navigate things in our life differently. Because words we used to say, thoughts we used to have, they're either tempered or no longer there for someone else because you have come in and transformed our mind, transformed our thinking, transformed the way, the way we do things. And Father, this morning, I'm so grateful for each one who is here um, in person or online, and grateful, Lord, for them tuning in and, and connecting with us this Sunday. And Father, may these words that we're talking and the things we're discussing, Lord, not just um, be good incentive for us to live, but may they have application. May they be transformational, Lord, this week in our life. May we go back and read here in chapter 6 of Luke for our own self, and read and study and pour yourself into it and, and, and dig into these, this challenging conversation this morning about developing a heart for our enemies. Father, you are good. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much for your holiness. Thank you so much for your righteousness that can become ours because of the way, Lord God, that we have surrendered to you. We've given our life to you to recognize that you are helping us, Lord, to live in a way that is holy, to live in a way that is right, to live in a way that that honors you and loves you above all. We pray these things in your mighty name and all God's people said, amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us. And um, I want to share a benediction with you. And then Chester's going to close us on a worship song. Yeah, Grandpa, got a, got a little cheer, Grandpa. Got a, got a cheering section over here. Yeah, praise the Lord. Well, we'll have you stand. Uh, this is a benediction coming from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where it says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, you can keep standing. Um, you know, if you feel you need to do business with God, you know, you can do it right there. But, you know, we have an altar here. And, uh, you know, what, a, what an amazing, powerful message from, from our Lord and Savior. And, you know, it, you know I, I've been told the altar is like, coming to the altar is like coming forward and crawling on your daddy's lap and having him just give you a big daddy hug. That, that's, what, that's what the altar does for me when I come. If you need to do that, that that's why we have it. It's just not an ornament thing. So, wow, okay. <laughs> Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean you can only go this far? Who showed the moon where to hide till the evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. All to 
creation testify this life within me cries I know my Redeemer lives He lives to take away my shame He lives forever I'll proclaim that the payment for my sin was the precious life He gave but He's alive and there's an empty grave well I know This life within me cries, I know my Redeemer.